Hi everyone, Dr. Breiner here, and I just wanted to uh, let you know about an exciting uh, show hopefully we'll have uh, going here for a broadcast at some point, um, where we're going to be talking about various topics, and one of the first topics we're going to discuss is sleep. Not to put you to sleep, but uh, I think it'll be a very exciting show, um, and today I'm just bringing in the person I'm going to have as my uh, guest speaker, and uh, his name is Martin Goimer, and I'm going to show him right now. Say hi, Martin, to everybody. Hey, everyone. It's a great honor, Adam. I feel excited, and I feel very honored to be on that show today, and particularly with the topic sleeping. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it, I think it'll be uh, it'll be it'll be a great show because we're going to discuss a few different things about sleep. You know, I, I know right now I'm kind of working on maybe uh, some of the uh, technical sides to make sure that I can uh, that, that we can we can broadcast the show properly. But you know, we're going to uh, discuss what uh, what sleep is, right, Martin? And uh, absolutely, uh, and, and uh, you know. Um, unfortunately, uh, it kind of comes to the surface today that mm -hmm. sleep deprivation, lack of sleeping, right. is a more uh, global pandemic than everyone is actually recognizing today. So it's of a very deep personal interest to you, the mm -hmm. audience, mm -hmm. to understand what sleeping actually is. And that's... I suggest, Adam, what we're going to discuss and reveal. Right, it's right. It's simpler and it's more important for every one of us to actually understand what we are doing when we are sleeping. Yeah, it's actually an interesting thing. Um, Martin uh, is also a practitioner of neurofeedback, like myself, uh, which uh, some of you may already know about that. Um, and, you know, but he has a very interesting background. Martin's uh, not a physician, but a human biologist, which I think is a, a, a neat, uh, neat thing, and, and has a background in uh, the airline industry. And why don't you just give everyone a little background, because maybe it'll whet their appetite to want to hear more about it from you, about sleep. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the story started when I just finished off of um, uh, university, which mm -hmm. uh, I, I attended in Zurich, Switzerland. Yeah. Um, in natural sciences. And uh, then I off-tracked. I became an airline pilot for the national carrier and because of my special background in a broad um, uh, spectrum of natural sciences, the airline also appointed me to be their human factor specialist in the Flight Safety Commission. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this all about? Uh, we, uh, we, the Flight Safety Commission's task was to do everything in the airline's power, or to suggest doing everything in the airline's power to actually improve flight safety for you, the passengers. To do everything we can in pilot training right. to improve uh, safety. And one of the, uh, the standard things such a commission does if an airline runs it, is basically what the FAA does the um, Federal Air Administration. Right. We look at accidents, air accidents. And our task back in the 1980s was to determine what type of human factors, what, 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 what things in, an, in a pilot's life can actually contribute to the pilot be less safe operating the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And the first and most important thing which emerged immediately was their continuous lack of sleeping. Imagine if you do a travel across a couple of time zones, everyone is suffering from jet lag uh, to, a, uh, to a certain degree. Now jet lag, what does that mean? You f you, you, you're dead at 2 p.m. in the afternoon and you're fully awake and highly aroused at 2 a.m. in the morning, you just can't sleep. So uh, we started to really seriously analytically study the background, circadian rhythms and so forth, what they do to us, to our performance, and what we can do to actually reduce the effect of being continuously dysregulated mm -hmm. in our awake life. 
So the steps were from finding out that exhaustion, tiredness, right. has an extreme effect on someone's performance, not only in an aircraft, also in yours when you're driving a car or cutting veggies in the kitchen. So how does that affect us was an absolutely pioneering thing to study. And uh, mind you, we did not have high-tech equipment other than simple EEG equipment available right. at that time. Right. So we needed to go completely out of lines. We needed to study human anatomy and find out what are the performance requirements of a human organism and how can we reduce inadvertently this performance. And that's short, uh, to cut the story short, that's actually how we started back in the 1980s to develop means to assess someone's sleeping performance, recovery performance, the performance of re-energizing while sleeping. Because one thing is very clear today and uh, proven through many, many, many clinical studies and experiments out there, the only way you can actually restore yourself, re-elegize yourself, is by sleeping. Right. Imagine right. being awake is your blood, sweat and tears part of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And dealing with all that, you can only do by sleeping. Right. I think one of the interesting things that, that uh, you had brought out a few years back um, was that sleep is actually work. It's not it's just... It's a job. It's a job. It's something it's, you do. It's right? not something passive, which is yes. you know a different way to think about it. And I think um, right. I think the folks are going to like to hear about that. Uh, so when we when we get to discuss this again, we're gonna we're gonna talk to you about you know what is sleep and you know what what things that uh, uh, you, you have to do. What is this work? This work called sleep. What does it do? What what, what effect? What effects does it have on the brain? Yeah, and, sorry and, to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. No, I just uh, just want to let people know what we're <laughs> gonna because we're not getting into it now, guys. We're, yeah, we're yeah, just giving course. you a taste. Uh, I'm only giving it a few minutes. We're gonna end up coming back and doing a much longer, you know, broadcast so you can dig into it. Because one of the things that Martin also has done is he's created a um, a sleep assessment, online sleep assessment that we've used a lot with our patients over the years, and it really gives a lot of insight. So at one point we'll go through that in depth. Uh, once Martin explains to us a little bit more about sleep itself and and everything, so um, I I just wanted to you know thank you Martin for you know joining me for this like quick uh, little broadcast out there for everybody and uh, you know let's uh, let's see you very soon on this uh, similar screen and uh, so we can discuss uh, discuss sleep or understanding sleep as we put down uh, at the bottom <laughs> exactly sleeping. Sleeping. It's an action. Sleeping. <laughs> okay. Understanding sleeping. Yes, I saw. Understanding you're sleeping. Okay. Uh, All right. You know, thank you very much, Adam. I feel extremely honored. And as you can see, I'm fully enthusiastic about this. <laughs> so be assured, if you follow this broadcast, um, there is a lot you will learn from it, how you can actually make your life easier, healthier, more powerful. That's great. You can all, and do all this. By one simple thing, which is completely effortless, by sleeping. Sleeping. We'll just I have to work. Wait. We'll, we'll work on getting them in. Absolutely. So, folks, uh, thank you very much, Martin and uh, Martin Gremlich. And we will see you, hopefully, uh, soon for that broadcast. And everyone have a great day.